Hey guys, it's pre-calculus time. Are you ready for our next lesson? Okay, now that we have discussed the four conic sections identifying their different analytic properties, we are now ready to conclude our last lesson for conics, and that is for applications on conic sections. Our learning competency is to solve situational problems involving conic sections. But before that, let us first identify our problem steps as our guide. Okay? The first one, you, you know this already, okay? In dealing with problem solving. We have the first step, reading and analyzing. When we say reading, reading mathematics is different from reading an ordinary article. When we read a problem in mathematics, we must be sure we catch up each word. We have understood what we have read. Sometimes, problem contains more information than what is needed to solve it. As we analyze the problem, we should identify the given and the unknown. Okay? So that's the very first step. The second step here is representing and relating. When we say represent, how would we represent this, this given and the unknown in mathematical terms? Is the piece of information necessary? Okay, the unknown numbers in the problem can be represented in several ways, but always choose the simplest representations. As we relate the given, okay, what's the relationship of the given and the unknown? Look for keywords that translate into equals. What is the relationship of the given from the unknown? We are to picture out also under the second step we need to picture out or we need to draw or sketch okay by graphing a good sketch showing even information and unknowns can be very helpful in understanding the problem okay so that's the second step and of course the third one we are now ready to solve and work out our problem okay so as the unknowns in the problem are correctly represented then the meaning of the story can easily be obtained by expressing this into a working equation. And as we work out for the solution, always remember the different laws, the different rules, the different methods we are to use in solving out until you have come up with the best answer for your unknown. And last step here is of course to prove and to check. Okay, check the answers to see if they satisfy the problem. If the selected problem solving strategy doesn't seem to work when you actually try it go back to the list and try something else your check on the solution should show that you have actually answered the question that the that what was asked in the question okay in the problem and to the extent possible okay you should check on whether the answer makes a common sense okay so these are our recalled steps in solving prob uh, problems of conic sections let us try the very first problem okay we have here a food delivery area can be represented by a circle and extends to the points 0 18 and negative 6 8 and these points now are said to be on the diameter of the circle you are asked here to write an equation for the circle that models this delivery area so meaning guys this is an application of um, circle and from our situation uh, we have here a food delivery meaning the scope of our of this food delivery area okay and of course it is shaped in circle now let us go uh, let us plot the given coordinates we have 0 18 and negative 6 8 to picture out the situation okay so there you have after considering your coordinates of your diameter okay so there you have guys the next thing to consider is of course um, how will we identify the equation of the area okay the delivery area of course recall that when we are dealing with the equation of a circle we should have what we, we should consider the coordinates of your center and of course the length of your radius so let us have the um, as we analyze, how do we determine the center of the circle given the diameter? Let us apply the midpoint formula. 
Okay, so from there, from the given 0, 18, and negative 6, 8, applying your midpoint formula for us to solve for the center of your circle. With respect to x, of course, you need to add 0 and negative 6, and of course, divide it by 2, we have negative 3, and with respect to y, we have 18 and 8. As we add that, then of course, divide by 2, that's 13. So this answers with respect to x and y becomes our center of our circle. So meaning, this negative 3 and 13, we're going to plot. So we have negative 3, meaning 3 units to the left, and then of course, three, um, 13 units upward. So there you have, and then of course, not forget to label. This is now the center. Okay, now that we have already the center, coordinates of your center of your circle, we uh, the next thing to consider is now the length of your radius. Okay, so considering again from our given formula, from our distance formula, it's just a matter of what substitution from our coordinates from uh, the center, and of course, another point that is 0 and 18. So there you have it. And then, of course, our answer is uh, square root of 34. Okay, you are wondering why we're going to use square root of 34 and, and not uh, the simplified, which is expressed in decimal. I advise because uh, once we have substituted that, the radical sign would be automatically be omitted. So it's a matter of uh, what? As it, it would stay as it is, square root of 34 units. So again, the distance from the center to this point of your diameter is said to be what? Square root of 34 units. So that is our radius. So we are through now with the considerations. We have this, the coordinates of the center and of course the length of your radius. So we are now ready to identify the equation of our circle, meaning the delivery area. Okay, so from our our standard form again centered at hk so there you have and then of course just a matter of substitution again our h is negative 3 that becomes positive 3 we have k is positive 13 becomes negative 13 and of course this is what i'm telling you a while ago once we have substituted um, square root of 34 then square it your radical sign would be automatically be omitted so therefore our equation of our uh, food delivery area is said to be x plus 3 quantity square plus y minus 13 quantity square equals 34. That's the standard form. Okay, we have done with the first application problem on circles. Let's have the second problem. The cables of the middle part of a suspension bridge are in the form of a parabola. Okay. And the towers supporting the cable are said to be 600 feet apart and 100 feet high. What is the height of the cable at a point 150 feet from the center of the bridge? Okay, so this is an application of a parabola. Okay, we need to picture out also. Okay, and this is an application dealing with the bridge. Okay, as we graph that, okay, from our given, the two towers are said to be 600 feet apart and of course the tower or the cable is said to be uh, 100 feet high okay so as we analyze let us assume that the parabola is said to be vertex at origin okay so there you have the label and then again if this is vertex at origin so meaning from the right and from the left divided by 2 from 600 it's 300 so therefore our coordinates one of our points on your parabola or could we see it as your um, latus rictum we label it as 300 and 100 as our coordinates here okay and then on the other hand this one is negative 300 and 100 again because we have divided 600 into two equal parts so 300 300 on both your left and right Okay, and of course, another given is, of course, from the center, okay, is 150 feet away. So, there you have. And the other question is, of course, how high is that? So, therefore, Y is unknown from our representation. Okay, so, as we analyze further from our uh, given parabola, it is said to be an upward position. So, meaning, or upward opening, so meaning our 
working formula as our standard form would be x squared equals 4py. Okay, and we are going to rewrite the equation in standard form uh, representing your 4p with a variable a. Okay, so therefore x squared equals ay. This a now is unknown from our uh, given coordinates 300 and 100. Okay, it's just a matter of substitution this in our coordinates. Therefore, the value of our x is 300 and with respect to y is 100. So a is unknown. So for us to solve for that, simplify it further. Okay, so there you have our a therefore is 1 over 900. Now then, 300 square is 90,000. Then simplify it further. Uh, 90,000 divided by 100 is said to be uh, 1 over 900. Okay. So as we go back here, guys, okay, from our figure, from the given 150y, okay, now from our working formula again, uh, recall x squared equals ay, uh, substituting from our given a is 1 over 900 and your x is 150. So there you have, as we solve for that, 1 over 900 times quantity 150 squared. Simplify it further, guys. We have 22,500 divided by 900. Your value of your y is 25. So this 25, as we all know from the unknown, you are asked here for the height of the cable, 150 feet away from the center to that cable. Okay, so representing this in our given uh, drawing or sketch, therefore, the height of this is said to be 25 feet. Okay? So this is an application of parabola. We are now ready to deal with the third problem. Okay. It says here that there are two girls who are standing in a whispering gallery that is said to be shaped like a semi-elliptical arc. The height of that arc is said to be 30 feet and the width is 100 feet. How far from the center of the room should the whispering dishes be placed so that the girls can whisper to each other. Take note that whispering dishes are places at the foci of an ellipse. Okay, so again, we need to picture out from our given graph here, if this is a whispering gallery, again, we need to place our ellipse in uh, center that origin. Okay, there you have. And of course, from our first given, the width is said to be 100 feet. Okay. Now, if it's centered at origin and the width is 100 feet, so meaning 50 meters from the right. Okay. So there you have that will serve as our vertex. And then, of course, 50 meters, uh, should I say 50 feet on the left. Okay. So our vertex there is negative 50 and 0. Okay, another given, aside from the width is 100 feet, okay, our height is said to be 30 feet. Okay, take note that when we are dealing with the height of an ellipse, it is said to be in a semi-elliptical. So meaning half of your ellipse is to measure the height. Okay, so meaning from the origin, the height is therefore 30 feet. So our co-vertex is 0, 30. On the other hand, 0, negative 30. Okay. And of course, do not forget our unknown. The question there is, where will you place the, the whispering dishes from the center? Okay, so that is unknown. Now, as we analyze it further, let us go back on solving. Again, from our value of your A is 50, meaning the distance from the center to your vertex is 50 units. The distance from the center to your co-vertex or your ends of minor axis is 30 units. And of course, you have noticed that we have we have the given um, ellipse and it is said to be um, horizontal ellipse. The major axis is on the x-axis. So therefore, our working formula is said to be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Okay? Now, as we substitute, Take a look on that, okay? And we do not stop there because the unknown, as you recall, we are asked here for what? Okay, the distance from the center to this whispering dish. So meaning the unknown is our focus. Okay, 
So what's the relationship of our given? That is C. C is unknown. So we have already the given A and B. How will we solve for that? Uh, our formula C square equals A square minus B square. Okay, there you have. Then subtract. And then afterwards, extract. So our C there is 40. 40 units, meaning 40 units from the center to your focus. So we, as we go back to our figure, okay, from the center up to this, it is said to be 40 feet away from the center to this whispering dishes. Okay, so this is with respect to an application of our ellipse. Okay, and last type of problem we have to deal with is an application for hyperbola. Okay, so it says here, and alpha particles are deflected along hyperbolic paths when they are directed towards the nuclei of gold atoms. If an alpha particle gets as close as 10 units to the nucleus along a hyperbolic path with an asymptote equation, which is y equals 2 fifth x, what is the equation of its path? Okay, so again, we need to picture out applying our our graph centered at origin again with this form that our alpha particles is said to be located at the origin and of course our nuclei gold of atoms is 10 units away from these alpha particles and it is said to be deflected in an hyperbolic in shape okay and another given is of course our equation of our asymptote asymptotes which are y equals positive and negative 2 fifth x okay so you are asked here for the equation of the path and there therefore we are now ready to uh, determine the equation of that from the given a is said to be 10 10 units uh, meaning this is our from from the major axis or transverse axis okay so we are dealing with therefore a center that origin from our uh, standard form x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1 again this is now our working formula to deal with this equation okay and of course the question there is what well, how will be d or b for us to determine our uh, equation of your hyperbola meaning your minor axis or conjugate axis from the given a is already given okay so another given here guys is of course the equation of our asymptote which is 2 fifth x okay and recall from our formula for dealing with an asymptote it says here x over a plus or minus y over b equals zero okay now if we are going to rewrite our equation of the asymptote it is represented by b over a equals 2 fifth. Okay, now that a is given, your value of your a is 10, so it's just a matter of substituting it. And then afterwards, we need to cross multiply 10 and 2, then of course divided by 5. Therefore, our value of our b is 4. So we are now ready to identify our equation of our hyperbola. So, meaning substitute our uh, given a is 10 and then of course b is 4 then simplify it further our equation of our hyperbola is said to be x squared over 100 minus y squared over 16 equals 1 so as you notice again from our given diagram here that the uh, particle okay the alpha particle gets as close as 10 units from the nucleus along a hyperbolic path okay this has now an equation which is x squared over 100 minus y squared over 16 equals 1 okay there you have guys our application for the different conic sections from the center from the circle from our parabola from our ellipse and our hyperbola okay as we generalize sum up our lesson for today do not forget our steps in dealing with the, our problem solving. Again, we have the reading and analyzing. Okay, we have to represent and relate our given. And of course, we need to work out as we solve our given problem. And 
Um, lastly, the last step is of course to prove and to check. And of course, let us apply a common sense from our uh, final answer dealing with what is unknown in the given problem. Okay, guys. Now that uh, we are through, I am hoping and of course, you have learned something. So thank you very much, guys, for listening. And always remember, handang isip, handa bukas, tara na, ML na tayo. Okay, guys. And of course, uh, have a nice day and see you on our next lesson. And of course, do not forget to subscribe in our page. Thank you, guys.